Welcome hackers. Today we're going to look at some stuff from the new player's handbook, which I do not have as I am a small channel, not one of the big boys. Let me start by saying I don't think there is anything wrong with some of the more popular content creators having early access. I understand the idea that Wizards of the Coast wants to build excitement for their new product. I think six weeks might be a bit much though for the bigger content creators, and maybe a week or two would have been plenty. By the time us smaller channels get access to the player's handbook, I feel like the bigger content creators will have covered all the basics of everything and there won't be much left for us to talk about that you haven't already heard weeks before. I can give my take on stuff if it's different than what the main content creators have put up before. However, they're the big boys for a reason. They do a pretty good job of covering stuff. Some content creators have even told us that they're going to have as much as 20 videos out before the player's handbook drops. That just doesn't leave much content for the rest of us. So what can I do as a smaller content creator? Well, I can make videos that are system and edition agnostic, like many of my videos are. It doesn't matter what the system is, it's about building stories. I can also do reactions to videos done by other people if I think that there's more that I can add, or if I have a different take on something. My first video like that is gonna be about a video done by Chris over at Trant Monk's Temple. I'll have a link to his channel in the description of this video. Before I say much more, I want to say that I think that his videos are wonderful. I enjoy his channel very much and you should all go check it out. With that said, what I saw that piqued my curiosity was on one of his videos about interesting spell changes in D&D. I will put a link to his video in the description below as well. He talks about how the Feeble Mind spell got changed and is now called Befuddlement. I seem to recall the developers of the game saying that if something isn't in the new book, then you continue using the old material. I am wondering if there is some information that Chris has that I am missing that leads him to believe they are the same. The spells are similar, and they may very well be a rewrite of the previous one. And we're going to take a look and compare them in just a second. But there is differences, and since they are a different name and have different effects, I would think that maybe it is a different spell. First, let's look at the basics. Here they are the same. Level 8, 1 action casting time, same range and duration. The meat of the spell is where differences begin to take shape. You blast the mind of a creature that you can see within range, and then with Feeble Mind, the creature takes 46 damage and makes a save. With Befuddlement, the damage that the creature takes is much higher at 10d12, save for half. Average damage on a Feeble Mind is always the same at 14, but Befuddlement is either 65 on a fail or 32 on a save. Befuddlement will almost always do more damage. Even the effects beyond damage are different per spell. A creature that fails a save against Befuddlement can't cast spells or take the magic action. 5e didn't have a magic action, so of course this is a little bit different. I'm assuming it means that they can't use magic items. This is similar to Feeble Mind in that the creature that fails the save to Feeble Mind also can't cast spells or use magic items. But they also can't understand language or communicate in any intelligible way. That can be a pretty big difference. A befuddled creature can still talk to its allies, give instructions to its minions, and be interrogated by the party. A feeble-minded creature can't do any of that. But wait, there's more! Feeble Mind also makes a creature's intelligence and charisma scores 1. That means that any ability check or saving throw for intelligence or charisma is now at a minus 5 penalty. If they had a 20 intelligence before, that would be a net penalty of minus 10 to a skill check or a saving throw. That is a huge difference depending on what you are fighting. If you're fighting a high-level mage, it probably makes little difference. Either spell will cause the mage to no longer be able to cast spells and the fight is pretty much over. But what if you're fighting a creature that has a high intelligence but doesn't cast spells? Your party might be fighting an Aboleth. With an 18 intelligence and a plus 4 bonus, if the Aboleth fails its save, it will have a minus 5 penalty to intelligence saves going forward. That's a 9 point swing. 
making it almost impossible for the Aboleth to save against spells like Mental Prison or Psychic Scream. A befuddled Aboleth would have no such penalty, and would in fact only take damage. As we can see, there are a lot of differences between the two spells in the mechanics of how they each work. It is possible that Chris has some inside information from Wizards of the Coast, stating that the two spells are in fact the same. And if that is the case, and Chris sees this video, please let me know in the comments. Without that additional information for us, I think we need to look at them as though they are two different spells. The name is different, and the damage is different, and the effect is different. Let me know in the comments what you think of the two spells. And go check out Chris's videos at Triant Monk's Temple. There'll be a link in the description below. And until next time, keep on hacking the dungeon.